Guys, welcome back to my workbench. This is Dan here as always, and in today's video, as promised, we're going to be doing a truck update video. And this is going to be covering the weathering on the trucks and the wheels themselves. A lot of people ask me about my wheels and trucks. And I filmed this process before many times on separate videos, but for a lot of the newcomers, they miss those videos. Sometimes watch the newer stuff, and I'm not filming this kind of stuff right now because most of the time it starts getting a little tedious. And I try to focus mainly on car body techniques right now, like as in the last couple of videos that I've made, and including some of the new ones that are coming too. And so I want to put this video out there to get you guys updated on my truck weathering technique. Now, a couple things to talk about with wheels and trucks. My technique is relatively basic in terms of techniques, but I still make my trucks look pretty banger. I try to make them look detailed, and you can take these things as much as detailed as you want, to be honest. There are some modelers who prefer just painting the wheels putting them back on the truck, uh, the rail car and calling it a day and that's fine. If you want to learn that technique and you just want to learn the paint that I use to paint my wheels, there you go. You'll learn that here. If you are more of an intermediate modeler where you're just learning these techniques and you want to learn like the brushes that I use or like the paints specifically to mix for like the grime tones and things like that, you'll learn that in this video. Uh, I like to go in real detail, painting the wheels and the truck side frames, making sure all those parts are uh, pretty much covered. I don't normally paint the interior of the truck or around the area of the bolster. I will hit the top of the truck frame and the bottom of the truck frame and then of course all the edges the little nooks and crannies those are going to be the areas you do want to focus on and that's how I'm going to be approaching my weathering techniques to actually show you and once you get into that level of detail then you can learn all kinds of other techniques using pigments and powders and oils and all kinds of other crazy stuff my techniques I think are good for my models but there are some modelers out there like Butch Eiler for example uh, Gary Christensen um, let's see, Brian Banna, where they're going in there and using a lot of fine pigments and powders and really working different colors into the dish of the wheel, for example, or into the, uh, really the face of the trucks around the bearings, where they get a lot more color detail that's a lot more subdued but realistic. So this is just my way of doing it. I'm saying there's some other models out there that also do some really, really good uh, work on trucks. So if you want an even more detailed look on truck weathering, look those guys up. Those three names in particular, follow their work, look at their, what they do, you'll learn so much from that. That's how I I'll actually learned a lot of my stuff, in particular watching their YouTube videos, seeing pictures of their rolling stock, or actually seeing some of their stuff in person in this case. So, let's go ahead and get into this video. We're going to be talking about weathering a truck here. So when I paint my wheels and trucks, I generally use these two colors right here. I have Anita's Earth Brown and Ebony Black here by Americana. I was using Anita's Acrylic Black, but unfortunately Anita's Acrylics are now becoming rare and harder to find because this brand has apparently gone out of business and has either stopped producing paint or has kind of smurfed it to another company, liquidated a lot of their products and are only producing certain colors, I think, is what they're actually doing. Uh, but if any of you guys can find Anita's acrylic brand paints, pick these up. Matter of fact, let me know when you can find some, because I need some more earth brown. Anyways, these are the two colors that I use the most of. There are other browns out there, don't worry. Uh, other acrylic brands like Americana work fine. Apple Barrel acrylics work fine. But keep in mind with these brands of paints in particular, these have a tendency to dry out a little bit quicker. The Anita's brand acrylics are great because these stay thin for a long time. I've had this bottle for three years now, and it's lasted me countless wheels, trucks, rail cars, airbrush work, you name it, full paint jobs even, and lasted this long. Very messy, very beat up, the cap's practically falling apart, but still liquid, still runny, and that's how I like it. It needs to stay that consistency for this process. These paints right here will dry out a little bit sooner and a little bit quicker, so keep that in mind. But being that I use a lot of black, I did go ahead and buy another bigger bottle. But if you just want to buy these smaller, cheaper bottles, then buy these to learn. There are other browns, like I said, in case you can't find a new acrylic brown. And one of the colors is this guy right here. This will get you a good paint mix right here. This is the Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel. And again, Many other browns, uh, go to your local hobby shop, go to your local Michaels or Hobby Lobby, look at their acrylic supplies, find paints that are closest to these as long as they're matte acrylic paints, not gloss acrylic paints, not model master paints, nothing like that. Make sure that there are acrylic paints. So, talking about the brushes, I use usually a flat citadel brush and a liner type brush like this that obviously has been quite aged. I've had this brush for many years, uh, same with this one. And these are dedicated truck brushes. These paint the side frames, these paint the wheels, and uh, also these paint the axles. So let me show you another brush. 
just real quick while we're talking about brushes that will also do good work for you. This one's a little bit frayed out, but a Citadel Dry Small Brush will also work well for painting truck side frames. But bear in mind that with these smaller, finer bristle tip brushes, these will fray out very quickly and they'll wear them out in a heartbeat. And these are pretty expensive. These last a little bit longer. A brush like this will also work just fine. You can invest in a pack of these for a couple bucks, like $3 will get you a couple packs of these, and these will also work fine. However, I like the stiffness of a dry brush like this, and you'll see why in just a second as I demonstrate this. Of course, you don't need to go into powder work if you don't want to. If you want to stick with just acrylic paint work for your trucks, that's fine. But in particular, I like to have that nice dry powdery dull, dusty effect that real railroad trucks and couplers generally get. And I achieve these looks generally with Monroe models, AIM products, powders, for example. These all work great to get really fresh rust effects, darker rust effects, soot, uh, your chalky white for dusty effects. Uh, of course, there's many other grimy colors that you can choose, but this is what I have on hand. All five of these colors are what I have, and these are what I use regularly, and they work just great for me. Uh, in particular, the most common color I use is Monroe Models Dark Earth. This color is fantastic for trucks and wheels and again in a little while you will see why. In terms of brushes I don't stray too, mar uh, too far away from the kinds that I already use for acrylic work. I use older brushes like this and I use liner brushes like this to apply the powders and I also use cheap craft acrylic paint brushes like these to apply the powders. These are very fantastic for applying into all those nooks and crannies of the truck frames and the wheels. The truck I'm going to be weathering today is an Atherin Genesis truck. This is going on a Trinity 5161 covered hopper, which I'm working on uh, quite a few of right now. And with this car, it has a lot of nice details, like really detailed springs, uh, lots of depth in terms of the detail, and of course, spinning bearing caps, which are very nice. These brushes are the reason um, that I use these in particular, because these help to get in to all those fine little crevices underneath the trucks, underneath the bearings, and between the springs. That's very important. You want to make sure that all these little areas are covered. Now, talking about the paint, this is not just one paint color. What I like to do is take a little bit of earth brown, add it to my mixing paper. You can use a piece of styrene or something like that as well. Now, a lot of people do ask if I dull coat the trucks. Uh, in preparation and what I recommend you use is testers dull coat uh, testers has fixed the formula by the way guys you can get testers dull coat again just make sure that it's not old stock make sure you're getting the new 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 cans and make sure they're new the old new product uh, is the stuff that splatters the new stuff that I'm getting at Hobby Lobby right now and some other hobby shops is just fine uh, so fortunately they've gotten their head out of their butt and fixed the formula. Um, but in this case, what we're going to do is mix up a fine color here. And notice the color that I've made here just very fast. Subtle brown color. This is the key color to all kinds of weathering for locomotive trucks, uh, weathering like rust dots, everything. It's my basically mother color for everything. In culinary we use the term mother sauces to represent the five specific sauces uh, that are the base sauces for every kind of sauce or every kind of different dish basically, right? This is the mother color for acrylic in terms of weathering. As an example here, you can keep adding paint to this as you go. This is the wonderful thing about acrylic too is it stays wet and you don't need to add water to this. You can add a little water if you want, but generally full strength paint is exactly what you want. So once you've mixed up a color kind of based on what you see in the prototype, and again, pay attention to prototype photos because sometimes these are a little bit darker, sometimes they're a little bit lighter brown, and then of course you get different rust tones, which is kind of crazy, which we can talk about in a second. But for the most part, this is the common color that you're going to see. It's a universal rust color that you're going to see. So let's go ahead and start applying this to the trucks. In this case, I actually haven't dull coated this truck, and this is just an example of a truck where you can take and start weathering these without dull coat. If you don't want to have to do that messy process of dull coating, waiting for them to dry, etc., you can just go in there and start applying the paint right to the truck. Okay, and all you gotta do is just go in there. Notice the pattern I'm doing here. I go in and apply the paint all over the truck side frame, and then I go down in a vertical pattern like this, just like this, until 
it's pretty even. You want the paint pretty even, but you want to have that texture on it. Notice that we've hit all the nooks and crannies, and we've pretty much prepared that first part of the side frame. Now we switch to the other side and do the exact same thing. And again, you can just keep adding little bits of color to this paint once you get going. It's really, really nice, right? You can just keep adding to this, and you can paint wheels and trucks all day if you want to. Uh, the paint will just keep going for you, and you just keep adding more to it. If you're using paper like I am, though, I would advise to not keep working in the same spot, because then you start picking up fibers and things off the paper as the paper starts to disintegrate. Uh, normally, I don't work in the same spot over and over again like I'm doing right now. Uh, if I'm just doing one car, you're fine. But if you're going to do more than one, actually quite a few, like I just suggested, then I would suggest adding paint to different areas of the paper so you don't have to worry about it shredding. But as you can see very quickly, we just painted the truck. And I'm now going to go ahead and paint the axles. Be careful when painting axles because a lot of times manufacturers will use an all metal axle, which is just great. Uh, I, I like all metal ma uh, axles per, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> I like all metal axles particularly, but Athern, Genesis, and some other companies use the uh, plastic axle, and that's fine. These paint up a lot easier and a lot quicker, but the axles on, say, a tangent truck, an Atlas truck, something like that, where it's a little bit more detailed, um, those will generally be an all-metal axle, and with metal axles, you might have to apply one or two coats, sometimes three coats, to the axle to get it fully painted. So that's just a rule of thumb with these axles. Uh, if it's plastic, one coat should do it. Once you have the trucks reattached to the car, then what you can do is paint the wheels. I wait till this step. Uh, I don't try to paint the wheels on the trucks unless the car is actually uh, reattached to the truck, just because trying to hold the truck and paint the wheel is just too tedious. I use straight earth brown. Of course, you can use a color like this again, a burnt umber, kind of depending on your prototype. Uh, some of these cars will have a darker rust, kind of like this. Matter of fact, let's use this today. Let's change it up a little bit. Why don't we use some of this color as a demonstration? Normally I use the earth brown though, but you know, this is the fun of filming. We're going to get to play around with this a little bit. So what I like to do is set the car up comfortably where it's at the height I need it to be. I prop it up with a tool like this, set it on a napkin so it's not just straight down on the uh, table. Also because this does have fresh oil, which I'm also trying to protect. And in this case we can take this burnt umber color and we can start painting the dish of the wheel. I grab fresh paint at a time and then go in and paint the inside and outside of the wheels. Now this dark brown color uh, matches actually fairly well to what you see on real railroad wheels. It's usually this dark brown color and this actually works really well. As you can see you get a really convincing realistic brown color. So let's go ahead and move this over. Let's go ahead and start painting these wheels as well. You do it again, you go in, you paint the dish of the wheel, and this is how fast I can get these done generally. You can see, you just go in there and you start spitting that paint around relatively quickly. Gets the job done. And then you paint these parts of it as well. Not worried about the wheel itself. We can, we can clean all that off here in a second. After you've applied your paint, what you want to do is take a Q-tip. Not for all cars, but most cars in general. The rims of the wheels, the outer piece of the wheel that makes contact with the rail, uh, that part is always going to stay a shiny silver. And also because you want to make sure that your wheels are clean when running down the track. Railroad wheels can be dirty. It doesn't matter if they're running through mud or anything else. But... In our scale world, uh, you want your track to be clean, and that also means that you want your wheels to be clean. You want really good contact and clean wheels because that, in turn, will get caught up on your locomotive wheels and it will cause you some problems. So, we want to make sure that these wheels are really, really tidy. Some people will use a Dremel to polish the trucks off, uh, especially if you're using dull coat. That's a good idea. Uh, but if you are going to dull coat your trucks and your wheels, then what I recommend you use is 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol like this dipped on a q-tip and you rub that on the part of the wheel and it'll take that clear coat off and that'll take care of that for you. So as you can see we now have a really nice set of completed uh, painted wheels and at this point you can leave them just like this and call it a day and they'll look absolutely fine. 
And again, you can even mix in some different colors like earth brown and this color mixed together, for example, if you want to. You can do a bright orange color to represent a new wheel. Um, there's all kinds of things you can do with this just with painting effects. But as you can see, uh, this gives you a really good overall finish for the wheels and trucks. Now, another thing you can do is also paint your bearings the similar color. And if you're going to paint the bearings a separate color or try to match it to the truck, then what you can do is take a fine tip brush like this and you can also paint those bearings just like I'm doing here for example and you can see it gives you that effect of this all being different components different pieces just like real uh, railroad wheels so let's go ahead and do that on this car because I'm having so much fun honestly doing this it's kind of fun playing with these different paints uh, this is the first time I've ever used this paint on railroad trucks and I, I actually really like it I'm not gonna lie it looks really nice so there's an example of like a painted bearing for example you could do something like that you can even paint these springs a different color which we can do on this car as well we can come in here and paint the springs just like that and when all this dries and it's not as glossy it'll be this really subdued subtle color change and right there is just the uh, detail you can accomplish with just the paint technique but we're gonna take this a step further with the uh, powder work in the next step so these look great right now but we're gonna enhance them further now using the brown powder that I have this is like an earth brown tone and this is really great for like a subtle earth tone this is almost like a rusty rail brown and it's very good for recreating those subtle uh, railroad colors especially on railroad trucks so what I do is a light application of this powder using a frayed out brush like I showed earlier and essentially you take the brush and then you <clears throat> just very quickly rub it into the side frame of the truck now the acrylic paint that we've applied to this leaves a texture to it also keep in mind I have not dull coated or sealed these trucks in after I applied the paint I don't ever normally do that some cars, if the trucks are attached and there's a process like say I need to add more oil to the sides or I have to seal some decals in at this stage, then if I spray some dull coat over them at that point, you know, it's fine. It's no harm done. Um, but at this stage, um, I have not dull coated these in. I don't normally do that. Uh, only in certain circumstances. Now at this point, uh, while we're talking about dull coat, I will not seal these trucks in with any kind of sealer, flat coat, or anything when they are completed. I'm going to leave those... Uh, like they are. I want the powders to have that fresh bright tone and again I'm doing these with the intent of not touching them. I see a lot of modelers pick their rolling stock and locomotives up by like the trucks and wheels which is really weird and I don't recommend you do that anyway because you can drop anything and um, with this kind of weathering you don't want to do you don't want to do anything like that so what I'm just doing here is I'm applying some powder matter of fact I'm gonna hit some up on these shaker pads real quick there we go and uh, you can see it gives you this nice subtle brown tone it looks flat it looks dusty and dirty it looks like something you wouldn't want to rub up off against in real life so after we've done that now we can come in here <clears throat> and do some really cool effects and the effects that I'm going to do is some powder above the um, the bearings the bearings often get uh, a bit of heat rust around them and on these Genesis trucks these are really good to model that on what you do is you take a medium rust tone powder and you can apply that to the tops of those trucks like that and then very carefully just subtly blend that back in like that very subtly you can see that colors there but it's very subtle that's what you want now another little trick you can do at this point if you choose to being that I'm modeling some of these cars which are in um, grain service and various other services where the load and the commodity might be kind of dusty at this point I could take some of this white powder that I showed earlier I just picked up a nice big amount of this and I'm gonna try to <clears throat> take some of it off I don't need a whole bunch of it and I'm just gonna try to kinda dust this on like this <clears throat> and then real quickly I can kind of blow some of that off and you'll see this effect that you get this is one way of doing that uh, and this is normally how I tie my wheels together you get this 
powdery, dusty effect. You get the grime from that darker powder, and then you get the rust from the bearings. Essentially, I'm going to do all the wheels on this car this way, and the trucks. Now, if you want to apply powder to the wheels, you can, and this is where a brush like this will come in handy. And again, I recommend that you use um, the earth brown powder. Let's come in here with these powders and let's start spinning them into the dish of the wheel. Notice how quickly you get that subtle earth tone in the dish of the wheel. Just like that. See that color change? Isn't that awesome? It just creates this really really awesome flat grimy effect that just looks very convincing. That looks like a real railroad truck that should be spinning out there somewhere and uh, it just looks fantastic. So something I like to do towards the tail end of this process, and this is obviously something that's optional, is to add some of the mud splatter. And the way I like to do this is to use a Citadel number, or it's actually a small brush here. And what I do is it's a dry brushing technique where I take a dull, flat pastel gray acrylic paint. You can use any kind of pastel gray, white, anything like that. And what I like to do is go in here and dry brush some of this fresh mud onto the truck frames that we just prepared. What you do is you go in like this and apply it like this. Notice that it's just really on the base of that truck frame where a lot of that splatters would be coming in off those wheels. That's how it's going to generally build up and it's, some of it's going to generally get on those bearings as well. So those are the areas that you're going to want to hit. And again I'm going to demonstrate this with that dry brushing technique just go in here keep applying that paint and one load of that paint on the brush you can keep going here you can see how quickly I can do this just with some basic practice you just keep going in you keep applying that paint to the side frames as much as you want and if you want to pick up a little bit more paint you can but Less is more, remember. Uh, you want this subtle effect. You don't want a bunch of paint on there. I mean, some of these trucks do get muddy, and if you're modeling like an old scrap gondola or a trash car or something like that, or maybe a, you know, a grain car or a pressure aid hopper, sometimes those cars do get a lot of mud, dust, and commodity spillage on the trucks, and that's where you can come in there and model some different effects. But um, this is just really my general way of modeling railroad wheels. Now one other little technique I'm going to show you guys here is modeling a replaced rail wheel because oftentimes when these wheels get damaged or get flat spots uh, they'll replace the wheel and oftentimes when you see a brand new wheel it'll have a lot of fresher rust on it sometimes more of a reddish rust and then sometimes in this case like a brand new wheel it'll have this bright vibrant br uh, rust and this is where fresh rust comes in from AIM products what I do is I use the same brush I did earlier I come in here and I start brush, uh, brushing on some of that orange powder into the dish of the wheel like that. And then what I can do is also hit that bearing just a little bit like this to make it look like the bearing is also rusty and fresh. Then, don't forget the inner wheel, also just as important. Come in there, get that powder in the dish, just like that. Matter of fact, while I have some of that orange powder up, I'm also going to hit the inside of that knuckle too. Alright guys, well that's pretty much my technique in a nutshell for wheels and trucks on these cars. And the techniques vary depending on prototypes. You know, I will go into a little bit more detail depending on the kind of wheel or truck it is for a specific type of car. Like I said, a scrap gondola will weather maybe a little bit differently to a covered hopper where the scrap gondola will be exposed to maybe a little bit more mud or things like that. Same thing with like garbage cars. Um, hoppers, depending on what type they are, the commodity might get all over the trucks. Uh, depending on the region, there might be a little bit more rusty. Here in the east I see a lot of trucks that are weathered just like this so this is how I've based my technique on but it can change kind of depending on where you are in the midwest um, out west there near California sometimes you see a lot more of that darker grimy rust uh, in Canada you see more of like a wet brighter rust sometimes so uh, kind of weather your trucks based on prototype and your location. Kind of pay attention and study the railroad wheels that you see in, in normal real life and you can adjust these techniques accordingly. But these techniques will apply for just about any kind of car in any way. 
and I've used these for years and years and years and they work just fine for every one of my prototypes. Uh, but I really want to thank you guys for watching this video. I'm hoping this answers some of your questions. If you guys have more questions based on the subject or topic, uh, you guys can of course leave comments and I'll do my best to try to reply to them. I apologize if I miss comments. I usually just get so many that I can't keep up sometimes, but I try to do my best to go through and sort things out. Of course, you can message me on Facebook. My name is Daniel Arnold. You guys can look me up there and uh, send me some messages if you want to, and I can do my best again to answer your questions. But I really appreciate you guys watching this video and following along with these techniques, and hopefully these encourage and um, really teach you to apply these techniques to your own models and learn from that. Uh, so I want to say thank you for watching. Like I said, subscribe here on YouTube for more content. I'll have some more how-to videos and tip trick videos coming up very soon. And I got an update coming up right behind this video. So thank you for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.